So I mentioned earlier I had a chance to meet the ambassador shortly after he came here to Washington, D.C. I got to introduce him at an event that was hosted by CCTV America, and I found him to be very warm and engaging, very personable. Um, he assumed his post here in Washington after a distinguished diplomatic career, uh, serving as the Chinese ambassador to Japan. He also worked in the Chinese delegation to the United Nations. Most recently, he was the vice minister of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. That was from 2010 to 2013. I would like to ask you to give a warm welcome to Ambassador Sui as he makes his way to the stage. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mike, for your kind introduction. And distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, bon appétit, please enjoy our dinner. But it's a great pleasure and honor for me to speak at the China-U.S. Economic, Finance, and Investment Dialogue and the annual gala of the China General Chamber of Commerce, USA. I used to attend the gala dinners of the American Chamber of Commerce in Beijing, where black tie was not always required. <laughs> but I'm really pleased to be here, to join all of you here at this event hosted by the Chinese Chamber of Commerce here. So first of all, let me thank President Yuan Ning for your kind invitation. And let me also commend the CGCC for its contribution in advancing business ties between China and the United States over the last nine years since its founding. The CGCC has been fulfilling its mission to serve its members and to serve as a bridge between Chinese and American business communities. We at the Chinese Embassy salute you for a job well done and will continue to support your valuable efforts. This year marks the 35th anniversary of diplomatic relations between China and the United States. And these 35 years, and indeed the 42 years since President Nixon's visit to China in 1972, have not been quiet years in the world. There were decades of profound changes and sometimes global transformation. The domestic situations in our two countries have also changed a great deal. And notwithstanding all this, China-U.S. relations have advanced and grown beyond the imagination of anyone at the beginning. This is due to the joint efforts of our two peoples, and in particular, to the vision and the courage of those who have guided this relationship through all the ups and downs. Successive Chinese leaderships and eight presidents from both parties in the United States have had the vision to identify our common interests in the changing world and the courage to overcome domestic and external obstacles and keep the relationship on the right track. The evolution of our economic relations is testimony to this. We all remember the days of the 1990s when the U.S. Congress annually debated over whether to extend the most favored nation treatment to China. And we all remember the long years spent on the grueling negotiations for China's accession to the WTO. At such challenging times, our people and our leaders show the vision and the courage to make the right decisions. And the U.S. business community deserves our special commendation for standing up and speaking up. Perhaps we should also thank those who opposed at first, because strong opposition stimulated our best efforts and spurred us on 
to achieve what we aim to achieve. And the achievements are truly impressive. The benefits to our two peoples are enormous. We are now each other's second largest trading partners. Our bilateral trade exceeded 520 billion US dollars last year, and increased over 200 times from the beginning of diplomatic relations. Our two-way investment started from scratch, and now the total amount is more than 100 billion US dollars. U.S. companies investing in China have reaped significant gains along with China's rapid development. An increasing number of Chinese companies are selecting USA as the top destination for their outbound investments. As a result, our two economies are more closely interconnected than ever before. This complementary and mutually beneficial relationship creates new business opportunities and new jobs for both countries and enables both to carry out economic restructurings at home and be more competitive in the world. Today we are faced with new opportunities and challenges that call for the same vision and courage in our response. The world continues to change profoundly and rapidly, and these changes could affect generations to come. Globalization is making its impact felt everywhere. New advances in science and technology are transforming our daily life. Our two countries, as the world's two biggest economies have a pressing need to work together on a wide and growing range of international issues. From global economic governance to international financial stability. From the G20 and APEC cooperation to the blueprint of free trade area for the Asia Pacific. From climate change to infrastructure building, from curbing protectionism to alleviating poverty, and from disease prevention to disaster relief. This is not only our shared interests, but also our shared responsibility to the international community. Bilaterally, we have started the unprecedented and substantive bilateral investment treaty negotiations on the basis of pre-establishment national treatment and a negative list. I think it could be said that what the BIT means for us will be no less than what the WTO accession meant 13 years ago. It will unlock tremendous opportunities for both Chinese and American investors with a more stable and predictable environment. Domestically, China is implementing comprehensive reform measures that will give a fuller play to the role of the market and will open up new opportunities for innovation and development. These are important steps towards the realization of China's two centenary goals and the Chinese dream a dream that will not only bring about a better life for the Chinese people, but also contribute to global peace and prosperity and make the world a better place for all. This new big picture presents a new test to the China-US relationship. Do we have the vision to see the historic opportunities it offers? And do we have the courage to seize these opportunities for the well-being of our peoples. And our leaders have shown such vision and courage. President Xi Jinping and President Obama made the strategic decision at the sunny lands June last year that our two countries should work together
to build a new model of major country relationship. This is a wise decision based on full recognition of the new political and economic imperatives. This is a firm commitment to breaking the traditional rule of major power rivalry. And this is a bold goal that requires joint and persistent efforts by all of us. And I think for the business community of both countries, success of this new model will be a once in a lifetime opportunity as it will enhance mutual confidence between the two nations, stabilize the relations, and create a much better and more assuring business environment. At the same time, business community is also an important stakeholder in this endeavor. The two governments need your support and participation. You have to help make sure that relationship keep moving on a steady track and that the vision of a new model become a reality. Indeed, this should be a key part of your corporate social responsibility. Next month, President Obama will come to China for the APEC and for a bilateral visit. The meeting between the two presidents will be a good occasion for the two sides to reaffirm the commitment to the new model of the relationship and chart the course for future China-US cooperation. Full preparation should be made for the summit so that it will be substantive and productive, strategic and forward-looking. President Xi Jinping has said that building the new model of relationship between our two countries is like building a great mansion. It has to be built brick by brick. I would expect more and more bricks from the business community of both countries. Let's join forces to accomplish this inspiring construction project. And let's work together to make this joint venture a great success. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Ambassador.